brand spanking new American Sports Network Elite Eight. Top eight teams in the country, and there's a new number one. Denver swap spots with Minnesota, Duluth, Boston University there in third. Quinnipiac, despite a loss this weekend, still is in the top four. Lowell, BC, Penn State, and Minnesota. Two Big Ten teams slipping in there. And the puck drops here on this week's edition of College Hockey Now. He's former Stony Brook goaltender Brendan Jones. I'm Matt Lincoln Jonesy. Denver over Duluth. Why? Well, I love the way that Denver's playing. And the reason why I had him jump in the standings there is because Duluth didn't play this weekend. And Denver, two tough wins, one against Air Force. And listen, this Air Force team's very good. They're going to weigh you down. And then the next night, they were resilient came back against a tough Wisconsin team, 6-5. They were up big in that one. They didn't let it uh, slip out of their hands. So I love the way Denver's playing. They're finding ways to score goals. Uh, Jim Montgomery's not, a, not necessarily happy with the way they're playing, which is almost a good thing because they could only get better. Well, for sure, two top teams at the top of the country. It is Denver and Duluth. Let's start the show by looking back at the Friendship Four. Four top teams playing in Northern Ireland, and we did see a mild upset in the championship after dispatching of UMass in the semifinals, Vermont stayed hot, knocked off Quinnipiac in the championship game. VCATs now 9-3-2 on the season. Jonesy, what were your three biggest takeaways from the Friendship Four? First, you got to go goaltending. First, St. Lawrence has one of the best goaltenders in the ECAC, and then Vermont has one of the best goaltenders in hockey. Stefanos Lakis, you see him there for Vermont, absolutely lights out all weekend. 73 saves, only let in three goals, obviously led them to the Friendship Four Championship, won the Bell Pot Trophy. He was unbelievable. But then Kyle Hayton for St. Lawrence, 0-0 against Quinnipiac, and then he made 72 saves on the weekend, only let in two goals against UMass early on in that one. So he's an unbelievable goaltender. They both give you a chance to win every night. They're both backbones of their team, and they play uh, very similar styles. Takeaway number two, what do you think about Quinnipiac? They're struggling to score goals, man, and one goal on the entire weekend, and that's you know not what Rand Pecknold wants to see, especially from a team uh, that went to the national championship game last year. You can't take anything for granted if you're them, but it, like we just mentioned, they clearly ran into some hot goaltending. Uh, they played both Vermont and Quinnipiac. They did generate shots and opportunities, and you can see right here, they just couldn't bury the biscuit. Tough. And then finally, the biggest thing to come out of Belfast is what? Vermont. They're the real deal, man. They really are. I'm very impressed with the Catamounts. I knew they were going to be better, but not this good. They outplayed UMass the last two-thirds of the game and Quinnipiac for most of that championship game. I understand Quinnipiac was a little tired. St. Lawrence is a very good team. But listen, this is a new identity for Vermont. They are a resilient bunch, playing with a ton of confidence. Got a lot of young guys, got a lot of veterans leading this way. An impressive showing for Vermont. It's been an impressive season. They're second in the hockey, in hockey East. And Coach Kevin Snedden certainly saw plenty he liked with his team knocking off the Bobcats. This is a big win for our program. Happy for all our fans that are watching. Certainly happy for our friends and family that are here. And I would like to say a special thanks to everybody who organized this tournament and to all these great fans and the community because we felt so welcomed all week. Thank you. Jonesy, we're a third of the way through the season. We've passed Thanksgiving, and while the schedule was light this past weekend, we did have some maybe head-scratching yeah. finals from this weekend. So what we're going to do is put some teams on the worry meter, teams Man. that should we worry about the fact that they lost this weekend. Well, let's start about the team that we've already talked about, Quinnipiac, and their loss to Vermont. Not terribly worried about Quinnipiac, but this is not a team that I'm used to seeing in terms of them being the consistent Bobcats. I'll give them a six on the worry meter they aren't getting production from a specific star player like they did last year like Sam Annis they can't get consistent scoring now I'm not saying they aren't scoring goals they do get production up and down the lineup but you need more of it like I mentioned earlier last year they got it from St. Dennis and with and and uh, Sam Annis this isn't the same team they are deep don't get me wrong but who's gonna come up big who's gonna be the guy in crunch time I just, I want somebody to step up and be the guy. And, you know, you want both Clifton's to be the guy. You know, a KJ Tiffenworth, Craig Martin's playing better. But nobody's really solidified themselves to make a case as Quinnipiac's go-to guy. Well, let's switch gears and talk about the reigning national champs, North Dakota. Lost one to Michigan State, tied Michigan State, an awful weekend. Mm -hmm. Put them on the worry meter. One less worried, ten most worried. What about North Dakota? I love the Fighting Hawks, and I love the way that they played last year. This year, they are a completely different team. I'm giving them a four 
they have the talent, it's just a matter of when with them. I don't think that it's a lack of leadership they have. You know, Gage Osmus is back, he's a second year captain. A guy like Bolanin is a leader for them, but I'm not necessarily worried in the long run about North Dakota. Right now, I am. They need to figure it out. They need to start getting back to North Dakota hockey. I'm not saying that they won't. It's just a mentality that they need to develop. They're a very strong team. They have one of the best fan bases in college hockey. They have a lot of support. It's just those mental lapses mid-game that is really setting them back. I'm not worried about Cam Johnson either. Obviously, some people are giving him a little, a little bit of a tough time because you know he's been letting in majority uh, more goals than we're used to let, seeing him let in. But I'm not worried about Cam at all. Now, last week we talked up Bemidji and their 11-0-1 record in the WCHA. And then what did they, they do this weekend? They got swept by Princeton. Yeah. Is this a reason to worry? Uh, not really. And it's actually probably a good thing for, for Bemidji. I give them a three on the worry meter in terms of, you know, if I think they're in trouble or not. I really don't. Um, this was a trap game. And we had this discussion earlier. They are, actually are going into a tough part in their schedule. They play Michigan Tech this week, and they might have been caught overlooking uh, the Tigers. They still have, obviously, the best goaltender in the WCHA, Michael Bitzer. They outplayed the Tigers. They outshot them. They just ran into a hot goaltender in Colton Finney, who was actually a very good goaltender, has great numbers as well. This Princeton team also not bad by any means. Uh, they're way better than they were last year, so definitely nothing to hang your head on, but definitely something you're not expecting. Well, it's going to be an outside chance that they would get at large anyway. But for now, right. it basically seals the deal. They've got to win mm -hmm. the WCHA to keep playing. Okay, Michigan continues its mediocre play. A split at home with Lake Superior State. Michigan's record now 6-5-1. and one. Mm -hmm. Are th Is there any bedwetting going on in Ann Arbor right now? It may be, because this is a team that loves to score goals. So I'm giving them a 7 on the worry meter. They're 2.75 goals per game. Last year they were up around like four and a half and they obviously had one of the most prolific offenses in the country. Uh, last year it, there was not one person that you looked at that lineup and said, hey, he can't score goals. There's a lot of young kids on this team where you're just like, hey, you know, maybe he's not ready. Maybe he's not really, you know, making tr the transition like we thought we thought he would. William Lockwood, you know, he leads them in scoring, but you thought he might be the next Michigan guy like Kyle Connor or like a Dylan Larkin. So, I'm not worried uh, technically about Michigan in the long run like North Dakota, but right now, you know, there's some cause for concern. And the Big Ten might be better than we thought with yeah. both Penn State and Ohio State playing really well to start the year. And next, are the VCats for real? We sit down with one of their stars to talk about the great start for Vermont. That's coming up next on College Hockey Now. Two of the best goaltenders in college hockey had an international stage to show off their skills this weekend at the Friendship Four. St. Lawrence's Kyle Hayden and Vermont's Stefanos Lekas. Their skills are the subject of this week's Beast Breakdown. Be Break It Down. Certainly will. Let's start with Kyle Hayden of St. Lawrence. Look at this nice reaction, glove save. Rebound goes out in front of him, but he locks in on it. Knows that KJ Tiffenworth's going to spin and shoot. Nice little slide push right there while he's on the ice. Let's take another look at it. Knows exactly where the puck is understands that KJ Tiffenworth cannot lift it, stays on the ice, tries to place his rebound in the corner, anticipated that low shot. Now this is what I love about him, his aggressiveness. Look, he starts on the back post, puck's gonna go right into the slot. Look where he winds up, about a foot out of that blue paint. Just very aggressive, attacking shooters, starts in the paint, winds up well out of it. Cuts down that entire angle. Kyle Hayden was outstanding all weekend, we mentioned earlier in the show, and then Absolutely no rebound, and that's all you could ask for uh, from your goaltender. Once again, look at this on the penalty shot. Players at the top of the circles, he's at the bottom of the circles, matches his speed, and then absolutely shuts the door. We're going to see on this replay, there's a little room back there. Kyle Hayton says, no, you may not. Little room right there. Look at that left leg gets over. Toe save, unbelievable job by Kyle Hayden, one of the best in the ECAC. Then on the other side of the ice, look at, let's just spot shadow Stefanis Lakis. I love his work ethic. He's so determined to be a good goaltender. As he just goes up, down, fighting through screens, he's in his stance the entire time. I know from experience that his legs are burning, goes down two, goes down three times. He's gonna go down one more time, give somebody a little shove in front of the net, trying to clear the way. I love his work ethic. I love how intense he is. And then this is his skills, just absolutely beats Craig Martin to that back post. Craig Martin thinks that he's going to take Le Lekas to the opposite side of the net. Lekas takes away that entire upper part of the net, 
moves to his right, strong push, explodes off that post, great flexibility as well for the Catamounts goaltender. He was unbelievable, and honestly the only reason, not the only reason, but probably the biggest reason why the Catamounts won the friendship for. Vermont putting five goals up there as well. Next time to catch the VCATs on the American Sports Network is 6 o'clock Friday night, January 20th, as the Vermont Catamounts take on UConn. We now welcome into the program University of Vermont forward Ross Colton. Uh, Ross, congrats on winning that Friendship Four. Might have taken some people by surprise. How important was that, being able to ring that bell uh, after you guys picked up that victory? Uh, no, it was... Uh... It was definitely a huge honor. Uh, I think it might have caught some people by surprise, but uh, not us. Uh, going in there, I think we were pretty confident. Uh, we got a great team uh, in that locker room, and uh, every game, you know, we're confident that we're going to get two points. And uh, ringing that bell at the end was uh, definitely a special feeling that uh, we're going to remember forever. Now, obviously, you guys were over in Belfast, Northern Ireland. How much of a bonding experience was that for you and the boys? Uh, it was definitely an unreal experience. Um, any road trip for any team is definitely a bonding experience, but to uh, travel like seven hours over there and uh, spend a week with the guys and uh, just grow co closer as a team and do small things like uh, the Game of Thrones tour and then win a championship all made it uh, more surreal for us. Are you a big Thrones fan? Uh, no, I'm not. It was the uh, first time I've been to there and uh, heard about Game of Thrones really, so it was something different, but definitely I'm going to have to look into watching it now. Oh, once you start, I'm telling you, you're not going to stop. You're going to have to binge the whole thing. <laughs> That's what I hear. You're going to get hooked. So definitely uh, going to have to look into downloading Hulu and starting to watch that. Who, who on your team was most hyped about finding the Game of Thrones set? I mean, I would have been, been the kid, kid in the candy store if I was there. Uh, definitely Trey Phillips, uh, defenseman number 26. He's a huge Thrones guy, and uh, he was talking about it all trip, and uh, he was definitely excited, and when he got there, he, like you said, was like a kid in a candy store. So uh, I'm sure he'll remember that forever. All right, so you said, you know, you're not the biggest Thrones fan. We'll let that slide. What was your favorite part of the trip besides uh, ringing that bell and winning the tournament? Uh, favorite part for me was just uh, walking around, taking in all the sights. Uh, that was uh, my first time really going overseas as a team and, uh, you know, first time going to Belfast. So. Um, I just wanted to make every moment over there count and, uh, you know, like you said before, uh, being with the guys and winning the championship made everything better. For sure. All right, let's talk a little bit more about what's been going on in the ice. You've been picking up your play specifically in terms of scoring. Why do you think that is? I think uh, just my confidence level has been up a little bit more. Uh, I think I was getting my chances earlier on in the season. Just bounces weren't going my way, and but uh, right now they are, so I'd like to keep them that way. But uh Definitely my line mates and my teammates are, you know, finding me in the offensive zone and we're playing a great team game right now and working hard uh, in all three zones. So, uh, and, and getting great goaltending, can't uh, emphasize that enough. So uh, if we keep doing that, uh, hopefully uh, bounces will keep going my way. Hey, you, you stole my next question. Lekas has been <laughs> lights out all year, man. What's it like knowing you have him back there? And, and what's it like in practice? Does he make it better, more fun? What's the deal? Well, I mean, he's a gamer, and uh, he competes 60 minutes in uh, in the games and comes to practice every day, uh, comes to work, and um, he's a great teammate, and uh, I love him to death. And, you know, just knowing he's back there uh, during the game, it, it makes me feel more confident that, uh, you know, we're going to be uh, a competitor in every game. And, um, you know, if he could just keep that up, and uh, I think it gives all the guys, you know, more confidence that, hey, uh, you know, we're going to get a shot at winning this game. All right, now I want to talk a little bit about something you mentioned earlier in the interview, confidence. Uh, when I spoke to head coach Kevin Sneddon earlier in the year, he was telling me, hey, we're changing the identity of this team. We're changing the vibe uh, every day when we walk into the gut. How has the culture changed for you since day one? Um, I think it's just we've uh, grown closer as a team. Uh, we've gone through a little bit of uh, adversity through these first couple months of the season, but uh, you know, we're just a next guy up mentality, you know, next guy uh, who wants to come to play every day. And uh, I think the things that have gone on in the locker room have brought us closer together. And uh, we're just a great team and family. And I think that's the atmosphere that we want to um, bring to the rink every day and uh, come to play, come play hard. And uh, I think that's what's been working for us. For sure. Definitely looks like it on the ice. You guys have uh, unbelievable chemistry. But I want to get one last thing in. Tell me something people don't know about young freshman phenom Ross Colton? 
Uh, one thing that people might not know about me is that I love to sing. I'm not very good, <laughs> but I do love to sing, you know, around the locker room and kind of pump the boys up a little bit, whatever I can do. All right, so what's the go-to song, whether it be karaoke or, you know, before practice? I know you're jamming out. What's the go-to song? Uh, I like what's ever, like, hot on the radio right now. <laughs> So my go-to would probably be Closer by the Chainsmokers right now, but hopefully that's going to change soon because I think the guys are getting tired of it. Uh, I'm sure you have a phenomenal so, voice, and uh, if not, the singing career doesn't work out. I'm sure hockey uh, <laughs> will work out for you. All right, hey, man, good luck the rest of the way, and uh, keep working. Awesome. Thanks so much for having me. A doubleheader is coming at you on Friday night on the American Sports Network. Coming up, we'll break down the matchups on College Hockey Now. Welcome back to College Hockey Now, a doubleheader of Hockey Friday night on ASN, Notre Dame and UMass at 6 o'clock. And then in the nightcap, Nebraska, Omaha taking on Wisconsin at 8.30. Jonesy, Minutemen are struggling, but the Irish have been far from unbeatable. So what does Notre Dame need to do to avoid an upset? Keep playing the way they're playing. And, and the UMass, we saw a very good team. They like to get out on you early. They're going to need to get out on them early. I love that the Irish are experienced in all three positions. You have Anders Bjork one of the nation's leading point getters. Jordan Gross on D, also phenomenal offensively and in three zones. And then their captain is actually their goaltender, Cal Peterson, one of the best in Hockey East. I love their depth, they're a fast, puck-moving team, a lot of energy, and they're gonna be determined to win after the Shalele loss against Clarkson. That's tough. Uh, meanwhile, UMass has been leaning on their freshmen, and mm -hmm. of course, as you may expect, that's led to some ups and some downs this season. Absolutely, and they are a team uh, that needs their freshmen to do well immediately if they want to see some immediate success. But we see here the percentage of the total team goals by their freshmen is about 40%. So 40% of their goals are, that are being scored are being scored by their freshmen. They have a kid by the name of Lagesson out there who's been outstanding for them. And then we just compared it to the teams that are going to be on our air. You can see uh, there's a lot of hope for the Minutemen. Meanwhile, Wisconsin and Omaha, the late game on Friday night here at ASN, a little bit more evenly matched. How do you see those two teams matching up? I love this game. There's going to be, a, I, I predict, like a 6-6 or like a 6-5 game uh, in this one because they both love to score goals. They both aren't the best defensive teams. You'd like to see them play a little bit better in their own zone. Uh, they're a little irresponsible, but they're both a little, a little young. Uh, Wisconsin has one of the best freshmen in the country in Trent Frederick, but Luke Coonan is another kid uh, that is going to be up there when his, when his time comes. He's going to be up there for a Hobie Baker Award winner. Uh, right now, though, Grant Bessie, phenomenal for the Badgers. Uh, but I do like this UNO team, and I think this is going to be a very evenly matched game. Austin Ortega, Luke Snuggerud are hanging in there. Tyler Vessel for them. They score goals, and they score goals on the power play, so definitely Stay out of the box if you're the Badgers. We talk about Frederick. We thought we'd take a look at some of how the players who played in last year's uh, national team development program have been performing as freshmen. And there you see Frederick far outperforming what he did last year on the national team, uh, doubling his production. Yeah, I love it. And I love that we get to compare him to some of the other freshmen uh, in college hockey. Joey Anderson, <laughs> nobody's on his level apparently. Clayton Keller, though, was a really early first round draft pick this year and Frederick obviously a little later in that first round. Looks like Frederick's having an outstanding freshman season after not putting up as much points in the NTDP last year. So hey, maybe you guys gotta look out for Frederick these upcoming years. Next, we'll take a look at the best of the best who made the plays over the weekend that everyone was talking about at the water cooler. ASN Top 8 is next. And technically, these are some pretty good mustaches, but how did one team take Movember to a new level? That's coming up next on College Hockey Now. ASN Top 8, eight best plays from the weekend. Number eight, BC Colin White to Maddie Goudreau against the Gophers. Love, little five hole shot finish on Eric Schuhlhorn right here. That was an unbelievable game at Conti Forum. Number seven, St. Lawrence's Gavin Bayreuther. Look at this. One time clapper, love the flex on this, he just really uses all that whip. This is an unbelievable angle, and this is why I'm saying it. Look at Wang! Blazer! Whips it in there, unbelievable shot by him. Ryan Wishow, you mentioned to me, was doing the mannequin challenge oh, yeah. mid-game. Mid Where is it? Where is it? Not Number six, Clarkson's Devin Brasso with a quick move and then the snipe. On Cal Peterson, no less. Very good goaltender, like we mentioned earlier, over his glove hand. Brasso, nice shot. Good weekend for Clarkson. Number five, Vermont, Mario Piscarich, top shelf. Bar 
down. Nice release, too. Very quick. Short Ridge looked a little surprised right there. Whizzed it by his ear. Can't stop it, though. Number four, Denver, Henrik Borgstrom with some patience and scoring. Love the poise by this kid. He was looking to pass the entire time. Watch his eyes. He wants to pass, wants to pass. You know what? I'm just going to score. Oh, he goes up top, too. That's tough to stop. Number three, for Notre Dame, Anders Bjork beating three defenders and then going top shelf. He's so quick. He's so agile. He's great with the puck, and he obviously has an unbelievable shot as well. I wonder if he's uh, going to be in the running for Hobie come the end of the year. He does have that elite talent. He is right now. Number two, Michigan State, Ed Minnie. Look at these saves. Not one, boom, boom, but two. That second one is the one that really impressed me. He was uh, able to keep his leg really hold steady. It, hold it, yeah, now. just to be able to hold that one. You see it on the overhead. He was very close uh, to going in, and Michigan State played very well at the Ralph. UND struggling to touch. And number one, Vermont, Ross Colton. Hey, we're a little biased. We had him on the show, but this is a good play. It was unbelievable. This First, I loved the move, and then the ability to get the shot off might have been a, a play within itself, and then he finished the play batting the puck out of the air. So great job by him. I love it. I don't know about bias. I think, you know what, that was just the best goal there was this week. Thanks for being on the show, Ross. Meanwhile, the Michigan Tech hockey team, check this out. They grew mustaches during the month of November to raise money and awareness in support of the Movember Foundation. Every single one of the players had a mustache. These are pretty good, right? Yeah, some of them. Some of them you could tell uh, need some work, maybe need some just some experience, which means just get a little bit older. Pretty good. I, I mean, you would have been good. You would have been able to pull this off really well. Yeah, I guess uh, we won't find out until next November if I uh, can do it again. Uh, we'll see if it's still on for next week's show. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> thanks for joining us for Jonesy. I'm Matt. Of course, for a lot more, go to AmericanSportsNet.com. We'll see you next week.